Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to turn things on and off whilst the game is playing for your game in Crater. So um, turning things on and off is a really good opportunity for you to give your players the chance to interact with the environment and to explore your game world and to also change up your game whilst it's running. It only takes a little bit of scripting knowledge. So this is a perfect tutorial for uh, anyone who might have not done any scripting before and might be wondering how to embark on that or to get involved in doing some coding. Um, it assumes no prior knowledge to coding at all, but you will need to use advanced mode because um, you have to, to do some scripting. And you will need to use the mouse and keyboard because you need to type words using a keyboard. So you're going to need to use that. So I'm assuming you've got advanced mode and a mouse and keyboard, but I'm not assuming that you've got any knowledge about coding at all. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on and off this street light over here. So the street light is called light three. It's a child of lamppost one. And I want to turn that on and off. At the moment, I can do that using the visible checkbox in the entity editor here. But um, I can only use that entity editor while the game is in edit mode, which means that if I turn it on, I can't turn it off whilst I'm in the game. So here I am in the game and there's no way of me turning that, that light off if I wanted it off for some reason. Maybe, um, maybe I, I've got a, a friend under the light who's a sitting duck and um, I need to turn the light off so that I can save them. Um, I can't do it. There's no way of doing it at the moment, but you can do it with a bit of scripting. So what we'll do is we'll click on that light, uh, light three, and I'm gonna add a script to it. Entity, add script, new script. The script I'm gonna add is called toggle visible. Toggle visible, no, toggle visible. Okay. And I'm just going to scroll down in here and I'm going to click on the edit this asset button for the toggle visible script. So uh, in here, we've got some code already in the boilerplate. Now we don't really need any of this stuff, but it's not doing us any harm. We'll leave it there. Uh, I'm going to add a function. So here we go, function toggle visible. And this is going to be called switch this function. So I'm refer um, referencing the class name here. So this is the class name. So to write a function, I write the word function and I reference the class name. Then I give it a function name. I put some brackets in um, because later on you might want to add in arguments. And then I usually write my end immediately after that so that I know wherever I've got a function, there is an end to it. If you don't write the end, then you can run into some difficulties. You will find that it errors. Um, so it's good to have that uh, as a principle, wherever you've got a function, make sure you close that function as well with an end. Um, so in here, I'm going to write some code and this is going to be self, which is referring to this script, get entity, which gets hold of whatever entity this script is attached to. In this situation, the entity is light three. So right by writing self colon get entity, I've now got hold of light three dot visible. So I can use this dot followed by any of these property names over here in the entity editor, such as visible, which you can see there, or, you know, type and color and specular. I can use any of those after that dot to refer to one of those properties in code. And I can set that to false. So this is saying, get hold of the light that we're attached to and make us invisible by unchecking the visible checkbox. So this is true, this is false, this is true. So um, let's run that. So I'll save the script with Control S or you can click File, Save, and then return to the game. Now, at the moment, that's, that function never gets called. So we want that function to run when an event happens in our game, such as someone collides with something or interacts with something. Um, and we can do that. The way we do that is if I go back to the game, let's say I want that light to turn off when I interact with this computer. Click on that computer, find the on interact event in the entity editor, 
So that's that one there. There's also on destroy and on collision and things like that, but we're going to use the on interact event. Click the plus. And then in here, I want to select my, la uh, my light three, which is test area, lamppost one, light three. The script will automatically pre-fill to toggle visible because it's the only script that I've added to my light. And the event I want to run is switch. So notice that that event coincides with the name of the function here. Now, if I wanted to run the init function again, for example, I could run the init function. I want the switch function. So I'm going to select the switch function. I've selected the switch function. Okay, um, so now <laughs> let's test the game. So pressing F5 to test the game. And if I walk over to this computer and interact with it, the light turns off. Brilliant. However, the light doesn't turn back on. Oh no, let's remedy that. So at the moment, we're setting it in one direction. We're setting the light just to off by using this false here. We can actually toggle it from whatever it is at the moment, we can make it the opposite using the not keyword, not self get entity not visible. There we go. So that basically says um, set to visible whatever it isn't at the moment. So if it is visible, make it invisible. If it isn't visible, make it visible. So now when we go back to our game, we should find we can turn it on and off. Yay. Okay, so uh, that is how to turn, basically turn on and off anything um, in terms of visibility. So you will actually be able to, let's let's say we, we can add that same script to our car. So add script toggle visible, and then let's hook it up to this PC. So uh, on interact with this one, uh, we want our car toggle visible and switch. So now if I interact with the second PC. There we go. So I can turn on and off that light and I can turn on and off that car separately from each other. But we could, but notice two things. One, when I turn off the car, the child entities of the car remain. So there are those two lights that you can see just the, the headlights in floating in midair. And if I wanted to walk through where the car was, notice that the car is blocking me. So the visibility of the car, you've made the car invisible, but it is still collidable. Okay, so let's have a look at that. The car off-road 50s. Now in the properties in the entity editor over here, we've got visible, which is checked. And then if I scroll down in here, there's another box here called collision enabled. And that's also checked. And notice they're two different things. So visible and invisible, collidable and uncollidable. So we need to set them separately. This is because you might have things in your game where you want them to be visible, but you don't want to have to collide with them. For example, little fiddly things on the floor, or maybe uh, trees in a big forest. You don't necessarily want them all collidable. Um, so we need to set that separately. Now I could do that in this script if I wanted to, but this script is also attached to a light and so a light is doesn't know what collisions are and light frankly doesn't care what collisions are. Um, so in order to have to like, I don't want to write another script for toggle visible light, toggle visible car, toggle visible voxel mesh. So what I'm going to do is write another script and this one is going to be toggle collisions. So notice the functionality is already different because I've called it something different and the spelling is different of collisions. So We've got uh, in here function toggle collisions, and this is really similar to the other one. So switch to add like a little bit of consistency with my function names. So I'm expecting um, any kind of toggle to have a switch in it. So that will help me in the future. Toggle collisions switch, and this is going to be self get entity just like before dot collision enabled equals false no equals not self get entity collision enabled. So we can turn it on and off using the same function. Now, I just need to hook that function up to this second computer here. So remember we had on interact and we were toggling that it was visible or invisible. Let's do the same thing, but with the collisions. So car toggle collisions this time, and let's do switch. So we've got toggle collisions, Toggle visible. Cool. 
running the game with F5. Uh, let's turn it off first. And then let's head over there as fast as we can. Jumping the ravine. And now I can run through the car. Brilliant. Okay. Um, now to remedy the hovering uh, lights and all of that sort of stuff. So that's literally a case of just a little bit of legwork because we've already got the script. So we're just going to turn off the visibility of these ones. Script. Toggle visible. Uh, stage light. Toggle visible. And stage light toggle collisions because the stage light is actually a mesh as well. Uh, toggle visible. And collisions and then let's hook all of that up to this computer on interact event so once i've selected the car once here it should be pretty easy to add the other ones so clicking that yeah go so it's already displaying all of the children of the car um and you can just add whatever you can add additional things to this you could turn off the street lamp when you turn off the the street lamp light um so whilst it is a little bit more legwork it does give you a little bit more um control over what you're turning on and off so let me just stage light one stage light two this one we want the visible switch the visible off and Stage light two, collisions, switch those. So now when I run it, there we go. The entire car disappears and we can still turn this light on and off um, separately. So the functions don't interact with each other. Cool, okay. Notice the shadows and all the lights and stuff um, are affected as well. So it's all dynamic, it's all in game. Um, and we can actually do, you know, we can have a non-collision event. We don't, we don't have to use this on interact. Um, I'm just using this on interact um, because it's easy to see what's going on. But if I wanted to, I could hook all of that up to this floor button over here um, so that when I walk on it, I make the car disappear. But why is the car disappearing? Hmm. Let's add a little bit of story. It's a really good opportunity to use an explosion, basically. So what we're going to do is whilst we're turning off all of the stuff there, Let's turn on some sounds and some effects. Um, now this is gonna be slightly different from our toggling visible and toggling collisions because if I go to our, ex our explosion debris here, right. So I've got an explosion effect here already in the game, exactly where the car is. And notice that this visible is on, but we can't see it. Now to see the explosion for the, for the explosion effect to occur, we need to make it go from inactive, i.e. this checkbox unchecked, to active. It needs to go from inactive to active in order for the explosion to fire and explode. So if I check that box, you'll see that it explodes. If I uncheck it and then check it again, it explodes again. This is exactly the same with sound. So sound has an active checkbox as well. So we need a new script that basically can turn the active checkbox on and off. So entity, add script, new script, toggle, active. So we've looked at turning on and off meshes and their collisions. We've looked at turning on and off lights using just the visible. Now let's look at turning um, effects and sounds on and off using toggle active. So here's my toggle active function. Um, class and I'm just going to write a really similar function again and here we can do self get entity active equals not self get entity okay so remember in order for an explosion or a sound to, uh, an effect or a sound to fire it needs to go from a state of inactive to a state of active doesn't matter whether it's visible or not. It only matters about the active part. If it is invisible, then you obviously won't see it. So make sure that's checked as well. Yes. Uh, okay, so we're going from uh, whatever we were to whatever we want to be. Um, and I will add that same toggle, toggle active, add script, toggle active 
to my explosion sound. So I've added it to my explosion effect and notice that the effect is inactive to start with, otherwise it will fire as soon as my game starts. And the same with the sound, inactive to start with, and the script has been added here. Now we can just hook that up to that um, retro computer. So clicking on the retro computer, add, and this is gonna be test area. This is car. No, this is fire explosion debris, toggle active switch. And a child of fire explosion debris, explosion large one, toggle active switch. Let's run that. So now I'm expecting the car and all of its children to disappear, but the explosion effect to play and the sound to play. There we go. And notice I can reset because I've used that toggle function. I can reset and make it explode again and again and again and again and again. Okay, and I can use that same um, toggle active script. There's a sound thing here. Let's add that script to there. Toggle active. And if I hook that up to, let's say, this computer. Oh, let's turn it on when I walk on this um, pad. So down here on the on collision this time on this um, floor pad here. I'm going to find that music, which was speakers to file effects detective music, toggle active, switch. So on collision, turns on the music. And then if I walk on it again, turn it off. There we go. So I can turn it on and off by jumping up and down on that pressure pad. Great. So that is nearly it. One more thing. Okay, so, so far we've looked at turning things on and off using a few different toggles, but what about sound effects that fire once and you want them to play every time? For example, we've got this light that I turn on and off here. Now, if I wanted a light switch sound to play, that's really easy. In fact, I have one here. And all I need to do with this light switch, it's inactive at the moment, is add my toggle active script, right? And then with the light switch retro PC here, I just add it to my on interact event. So test center, light switch, toggle active switch. So let's try that out. I walk up to this one. Light switch sound. No light switch sound. That's not ideal because a light switch, you can hear it when you turn it on and when you turn it off. So we need to do some specific coding for sound effects that fire, we want to fire every time and we don't want to have to turn them on and off in order to hear them, right? So we know that a sound will only play when it goes from inactive to active. But what if you're not interacting with something and you want it to turn itself off so that it's ready to be turned on again? So we, we want the light, the light switch sound to become inactive on its own after it's finished playing. And then we can make it active again when we press on this retro PC. I'll show you how to do that. So in the toggle active script, let's add a different function. Okay. And this one's going to be called fire once. And here it's, it's kind of similar. So we can borrow this because we need that. Uh, we set it to true, so it will play regardless. But if it's already true, then it won't make a sound because it's not going from inactive to active, right? So we, what we need to do is we need to wait like less than a second or however long the sound is, we just wait that long. Then we set it to inactive, ready for next time when we interact with the PC or whatever it is to set it active. Self schedule function. So we use this schedule command, which basically means do the next, do whatever is in this bracket um, off the main thread, right? So we're doing that because I'm going to now write wait 0.5, so wait half a second. 
if I was to um, run that on the main thread, the whole game would lock up for half a second while it did that wait command. Uh, it wouldn't actually, because the crater devs have very kindly stopped that from actually happening. It just wouldn't do anything. But for, for us to be able to use that wait 0.5, we need to do it in a schedule event, because otherwise it would cause problems, as I've mentioned. So we're going to wait. Now, something I forgot to do here is I've got a function and I don't have an end. So let's put an end and a close bracket. So we've got this bracket here, bracket here, an end. Uh, after this wait command, but before the end of this function here, I need to set the sound. So get entity dot active equals false. So I'm setting the sound to be false after half a second. So play the sound by setting it to active, then start um, start the next bit separate from the main thread, wait half a second, and then turn off the sound. So the next time when we come to um, want to play the sound using the fire once function, it will be going from a false state to a true state. And now, because I've written that in the toggle active, because it was still to do with the active property, I click on that um, PC and I just change this from the switch event to the fire once event, which is that toggle active. Toggle active script, toggle active script, fire once. Okay. So now when I go over and interact with this, this PC here, we've got our light switch sound. Now you may find that, like if I press it repeatedly, it doesn't fire enough. And that's literally just a case then of tweaking that number a little bit. So 0.1 or 0.2 might be um, a better amount of time to wait. There you go. And so that's how you would fire a sound effect um, and fire it once and then make it so that it can happen again. And there you have it. So that's how to turn on and off lights um, and voxel meshes and meshes can be using, can use that um, visible. And then you've got the collision enabled and, and the effects and the sounds there. And even turning on and off music by walking over this pad and jumping on this pad and stuff. Um, and that's, that's everything that we're covering in this tutorial. Now there are other things you can do. Uh, you can affect all those different properties. You can loop through every light in your level and turn them all on or all off. Um, you can affect the world properties using really similar um, sort of building blocks of scripting that we've discussed in this tutorial. Um, so I'll be looking at doing that in a future tutorial, but there's nothing to stop you now that you've had a little go at turning some things on and off and affecting the properties of entities in the game. There's nothing stopping you from exploring that stuff on your own and giving it a whirl. The worst thing that can happen is that you get an error and the, if you get an error, just read that error um, and it should tell you the line of code that um, is causing the problem. And um, you know, there's a really active community on Discord. So if you do get stuck, then definitely get onto Discord or on the forums and ask around. And by doing that, you will learn to code and you'll learn to um, some really valuable scripting stuff, which is transferable to game development in, in other platforms. But um, hopefully that was useful. And I really look forward to seeing you turning things on and off in your game in runtime. Uh, have a great time playing your games and I'll see you in the game.